Are you ready? I'm not going to get any more ready. Let's let's do an intro. 2024 Windrock Downhill Southeast. What an epic race. Yeah, number oh. two. Mr. Number two. You're almost number one. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. We're like a millisecond. You're a millisecond off of number one. No, he's he smoked me pretty good, as usual. Hmm. We need to talk to him about that. <laughs> He needs to slow it down a little. Well, lucky for you, I have a few topics pre-written out. Oh, you just don't want me to ramble around for 30 minutes? <laughs> well, I had a friend suggest that I bullet point a few topics so the other person on the podcast doesn't just get carried away. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me. Go for it. Here. Are you ready? Here we go. Uh, the track. That is the first topic. Mm -hmm. The track itself. Care to comment on that? Um, so we raced. Did you do the race? Did you do the Wind Rock race last year? No. Uh -uh. Okay. So it was the same. It was a lot of the same track. The snake, the snake rod. Snake Rock portion was the same. Um, yeah. I don't think I remembered any of it. Um, so that was it was basically a new track, even though I had raced there before. Um, <laughs> but the one thing there were some new sections that they added last year that were fresh cut, and it was it was wet, and so they were pretty treacherous. So track was really bedded in now um so i i loved the track i thought it was great i was riding the track today. again like I, I i i liked it um yeah how about you yeah uh i give it an epic track as usual uh i did the uh pro monster energy thing and that track was epic as well mm-hmm just know how to put together a really nice track. Mm -hmm. I felt we had some really good dirt there for practice. And then I felt like on the race day that the top was a little dusty. Mm -hmm. So I crew, super cruised through there because you and me were standing there watching some guys go down right before our race. We saw that one guy just take himself out in the first corner the first desk corner you remember that we both were like man maybe we shouldn't have watched first i, I still regret watching that like <laughs> I, still, I still regret i went down it today and i i regretted watching that yeah so yeah i felt uh but right after that i i felt there was that and then this remember the super high speed section down at the bottom mm -hmm thing is insane and i also felt it had a lot uh, quite a bit of tech as far and i felt like you, you were always moving like there was always an obstacle always a mm. pop or a skip or a jump or a turn or felt like it was a very busy track yeah uh, well it was a long race like i felt like it was three races <laughs> yeah. uh, i mean you know, once you would get through the upper rock garden, the Talladega section, I loved the fresh cut off camber uh, connecting over to Snake Rock. Like that was, that was really yeah. cool. I just, I don't know. I did it, I did it again today. I just, I loved kind of shooting down into that little off camber stuff. Uh, yeah. I like slower tech and then, um, <laughs> And then you would get to like that first sprint and that, that to me is like, felt like a race right there. So that was like, that was the, right. the length of a normal course. And then you do the sprint and then it's like, you're, you're going through another section of track and then mm -hmm. you get to the 
then you get to the motor speedway yeah and then you're still not done <laughs> off the shark fin and you've got more track it was yeah. a long track a little long yeah how did you do well before before we go to your next question what what was what was your favorite thing about the track or, or what was your favorite section of the track Mm. uh i don't know if i had a favorite i just kind of overall liked liked all of it did you like the speedway i did like the speedway but i will say practicing the speedway uh on every lap was hard because towards the end of the day you get tired and you're home but through there regardless of no, you, it's hard to you know keep the speed down mm -hmm. so uh i felt like that was a little crazy yeah but as far as babe no i but but when you had energy and the race it was an epic section because you're hauling by um favorite uh, there's a couple turns i really liked that up right at the kind of the beginning of snake rock okay yeah like that. How about you? Mm, speedway. Speedway. Yeah. That was a beauty. And, um and, and maybe a line that Jerry showed me. <laughs> One of those the same line he showed me. Oh, I know what line you're talking about, actually. That was a really good line. I wish he would have showed me that. I have a picture of him. Oh, you I have a picture of him pointing at at the at the, at the. You showed me after the race. Yeah, and boy, that was a smooth line. I I never even saw that. Damn, that guy's good. Yeah, you totally missed the rock. He went right around the rock. All right, so you want to get into the next topic? Yep, and I'll be more bullet points here. I'll be more brief. Crap. Okay, practice. What was your take on the two practice days? Because that's some of my favorite. My whole favorite thing about the race is there's three days of badass riding mm -hmm. where a bunch of badass riders are around. You're practicing, you're in full gear. It's just, I think that's so sick. Two days of practice and and then practice race day morning and races. I, I love that. Yeah. Practice was different for me this time um, because, you know, I had been at Winrock, still at Win. I'm still at Winrock. I, 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 this is this is the most I've ever spent on a track. I mean, multiple weekends, multiple days, multiple hours. Um, yeah. And so by the time I got to practice, um, you know. It, it practice was just different for me this time. Like I, I just, I like, I did done, did so many laps on that track um, that uh, the, the kind of the, the scary part about practice and like my results was, so if it took me that much to get that result, <laughs> like what would, what would have happened if I would have just showed up and just, just done friday and saturday like maybe i just wouldn't even have completed the race i don't know so, um so well yeah. you're doing much better you're nailing that whole new jump line that's got to be a, a cool accomplishment yeah i mean i i think this is what i i think so i guess staying on the topic of, of practice uh yeah practice for me this was the yeah, having spent so much time on the course beforehand and just being comfortable, like practice was just cool. I was getting to ride with everybody, and and uh, I did I did feel like things on the track evolved. Like the more that I, I feel like lines that you and I even were running, even the weekend before yeah. when we were riding, stuff started shifting and changing. Um, mm -hmm. So practice was kind of beneficial in that that the same some of the things we had been doing over and over and over kind of changed yeah i find i find it interesting from day one of practice 
mm-hmm. how slow I'm like going through the course trying to learn it. Mm-hmm. And then by race day, it's just such a different pace and course. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think of practice? Uh, I, lo- I love the whole practice thing. I messed up my GoPro, which I really wanted because I think that's a big one to have for practice mm-hmm. to, to study at night. I think that's a huge help. And then um, Friday, I had the theory of take it chill, just get comfortable with the track, not try and like, you know, stress out riding, just try and just try and memorize the track, just get some laps in on the track as many as possible. Saturday, um, Saturday, I wanted to pick some sections and try and go fast there in certain sections. Um, and I'll tell you more on that later. And, um, yeah, that was it. That was, that was it for me on practice, which could lead us right into food because I came up with a new thing for practice and food. You want to hear it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the backpack with a cooler in it was a game changer. <laughs> yeah, sodas, water, Gatorades, whatever, a couple snacks, and you bring that to the table because it was so hot. Mm-hmm. You get done riding, you could slam a cold drink with, and a little snack. Was, that was heaven. How'd you like my cooler? It was a plastic bag <laughs> <laughs> with ice in it, but it seemed to work pretty good. I was impressed. <laughs> What did you yeah. what did you bring for food this time? I and I got a I got kind of a funny story about my food situation, but yeah. What did you what did you eat on? Uh I don't remember actually. It was, I didn't bring too much as far as snacks, mainly yeah. drinks. But I, I'm gonna bring snacks next time for sure. Yeah, I t- I put um uh, protein bars in the freezer. Oh yeah, perfect. And I froze them and I had some, also had some little bags of popcorn. Um, I felt like I did a pretty good job of, of eating snacks, like some protein bars. And uh, I brought just a ton of water every day. Like you said, man, it was so hot. Um, I was hiding water up at the top of the trail. I tried to, um, every time we would go up to the top, I would try to drink like at least a half a bottle of water. Um, And then, um, but I didn't do this for the race, but I was proud of myself. So I packed a lunch Sunday, like, like, like the old school, um, like I made a sandwich. Um, and I don't know why that should at at my age should impress me that I packed my lunch, but, um, it was, it was really nice to ride and actually mm-hmm. like eat and i feel like i feel like a lot of the times man just ride until death you know riding mm-hmm. you know until yeah. can't ride anymore haven't eaten enough haven't you know yeah. so just yeah really really trying to be serious about that now yeah you know i think that's a, a big one man keeping fueled up for sure because I'm, I'm the same way i skip lunch and just I'll eat an okay breakfast and then just try and ride all day. And then when you're done, you like, you'll have dinner. But uh, I don't think it's good to keep – it's not good for, like, the next day and the next day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's – yeah, I think I think you hit, the, hit, hit it on the head there that, like, this is definitely something that this little, like, season of, of riding a lot is – you know, it's one thing, like, to go to the park and be ride for, like, two or three days. And like, right. you know, and that's it. You blow yourself out or you go to yeah. these places and you blow yourself out. But like, yeah, if you're going to ride like day in and day out, like you got to eat, you got to, got to be mm-hmm. hydrated. You got to s- stretch. You got to do yeah. all these things. Yeah, no, it's a big one. The full food thing is I'm, I'm hoping I get more and more dialed in, but staying on top of the food and the hydration is a big part of it. And I feel like I'm always lacking in that. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll make my or maybe you could make me a sandwich yeah you know 
I mean, it seems so simple and I'm sure maybe if anybody's listening to this, they're like, well, no, duh, you know, make it, you know, make some lunch, but I don't know, you know, you think they're, oh, this might be a food truck or you, you're just not really, right. it's not really the focus. Um, I right. also think underestimating like how long you'll ride for, like, yeah, you don't really think about what it's, for, but yeah. 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 It's like you ride to the end, then you grab it talk to a couple buddies you go quick shower you meet for dinner you stuff yourself you go fall asleep yeah you get yeah. about lunch the next day yep yes all right are you ready for the next topic i am the race run mm -hmm. give me your mojo on your race run well if I would have been three seconds faster, I could have had a Ooh. shot at a, at a podium. Uh, mm. I was really frustrated um, right after. You couldn't have squeaked three seconds out on that whole track. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was, I was really like, I knew I couldn't beat you. I knew I couldn't beat Jerry. And, and and when I say this, it's not that I'm saying like that I knew I or I thought I could beat anybody else. But like in my mind, I you know, just being realistic, I was like, look, my best shot would be maybe I could maybe I could get third. Like, you know, and there's some yeah. strong, strong folks in our group. So I don't say yeah. that like arrogantly, but. I know I cannot hold your wheel and I know I cannot hold Jerry's wheel. So that, that leaves one opportunity on the podium that maybe uh, there's a shot. So I was really, you know, I was real, I was really frustrated after Massanutten and I was really frustrated right after this race. Like I just, um, there were just some things that like I instantly regretted in my race run. And so I was just, I was really frustrated and i felt yeah. like i started slow like i felt like you know watching those people crash out in that upper yeah. rock garden was yeah. not good and yeah. i felt like i went in timidly um yeah. everything like i i hit most of the lines perfectly that i wanted to i pedaled my butt off in every you know pedal section um mm -hmm. And so I was just frustrated at the end, but I, but, but when I went back and looked at the GoPro, mm -hmm. I, did, I, it didn't, it didn't feel, it didn't look as slow in the start as I felt yeah, like as slow as I was in the start. So, yeah. so after I kind of did look at the actual times, um, I got I got got kind of a different frustration. Um, the I looked at I looked at the GoPro and I looked at my times, and I or and I was like, no, nah, that was pretty good for me, and I yeah. felt really good about it. But then I did get a little bit frustrated, like you said. Could I not have found three seconds yeah. somewhere? Um, yeah. But you know, Jeff, Jeff's awesome, man, and that's yeah. his, that's his. Yeah his mountain and he and Alan. And so friggin, yeah. you know, I got nothing, nothing but love for those two guys. And, and, I, yeah. and I deserve to be beat by them. They're, they're, they're great riders. Yeah. Yeah. And that's their home turf. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not too bad though, to go cautious on that top part. I don't think I did the same thing. How about your race run? Uh, My race run was that was it. So the last couple of races I've been uh like slacking, not slacking, but cautious maybe, just like making sure I get down without mm -hmm. crashing, but wasn't pushing like pushing too hard. And I'm like, man, I I want to start pushing more instead of just taking such a cautious run. And that run I pushed way too hard. Mm. And the top, that first couple turns, I took super cautious. And then after that, I got going way faster than I had gone in practice. Mm. And 
that right after Talladega, there's that berm you go up and over. Mm -hmm. I launched that thing and was just (laughs) staring down at the landing going, oh my God, this is done. It's over. Land, both my feet come out. I ride the uh, top tube for about 15 feet, (laughs) uh, but I'm getting slower and slower. And then there's this rock on the side of the road trail there and i just hit that and i just tip over oh my god <laughs> and then i'm like oh god and then i'm like come on hurry up go and then then i was picked up the speed again way more than i should have and i kept blowing through corners and i'm like okay you got to reel it back buddy and just you know find find a happy pace here mm-hmm. and then uh yeah i slid out a little bit again with uh just going cooking going too fast into some corners and stuff and then the other thing for me was the speedway. Mm-hmm. I caught a rider right after the bridge, kind of at the top of the speedway. And I couldn't, I didn't get past him until like the, kind of the end of the speedway where it has tiny uphill where the old uh, bike shop used to be. Mm-hmm. So I, and I could, you know, I, I couldn't find a place to pass. Yeah. We were go- both going pretty fast, but I feel like I could have got a lot faster there and carry a lot more speed. Mm-hmm. But you know, for him, there was nowhere to really pull off. So I it just kind of was like so you, that. So you, right caught him in, you caught him in the speedway or right after the speedway? Well, you know the bridge that you cross over mm-hmm. and then that rock you jump drop off of? Mm-hmm. Like I, I could have went for a pass in that turn after that rock. Mm-hmm. But I kind of was like, I backed up and I'm like, all right, I'm going to give it a little space and then went, I'm going to go inside and punch it. And then I think he went inside and I was like, oh, damn. Okay. And then I had to break even harder. But I yeah. caught somebody there too. That's interesting. I wonder if there was something about that going, either going into that area or something that was, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So you, <laughs> so you, so you could have potentially been on pace then to, Maybe I mean you could have you you could have you lost some time there. Yeah, I lost some time there. But you know, I don't know. Jerry's run might have been. He might have. I'm sure he had a couple. Maybe he didn't have mistakes actually. Did Did you ever um Did you ever hold his tire for the whole course, top to bottom? Like no during practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I don't know if he does full runs either. I know he'll cruise and then he'll stop and check a line out. Yeah. He, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't ride with him. I don't, I don't think I rode with him that much during practice, uh, this particular race. And maybe it was because he was way too fast. I don't know. Yeah. He was on a mission. I noticed. Uh, I will tell you a little story though. When I got done with my race, yeah, I I heard some pretty good. Uh, when I got done, uh, at the finish line, Aaron when Gwyn was there. Yeah, and I said, "Hey, Aaron," how-? he's like, "Hey, man, how's it going? How was your race?" And I told him, you know, I felt like I didn't. I was just overcooked some stuff and went was going too faster than I normally do. And he's like, "Man, you," he said, "It's important to go through and practice each section." At one point, all those sections you got to hit at top speed so you know what it feels like. Mm. You know what I mean? So mm. we were. That's funny because we were going to do that. Yeah. But then we just we just forgot to plan it out and do it. But yeah, that's, that's interesting. I I I was trying to think. I I mean, I felt like I did some faster laps, but I don't think I I don't think I tried to race myself. Um, yeah. I'm with you. I did some faster laps. I kind of thought that was good, but uh, now I don't. I mean, yeah, that race pace when you're like really pedaling through the sections, it is. It's you think you're going a lot faster, and you need yeah. to know to go that fast for sure. I think I think the closest attempt that I did was. It was too late though. I did it on Sunday. And I, I, I got behind Alan, and I was like, he just pulled away from me, and I was like going pretty much as fast as I could, and I was like, 
Well, we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you told me that. <laughs> Didn't get you too pumped up. For yeah, races. that's never that's never good. Like <laughs> a few hours before the race, to uh, try to hold, you know, someone yeah. the wheel, and you're like, I can't. They, yeah, they they just left me. Sometimes it's hard though. Following. Sometimes you're faster when you're in front. Sometimes following is is harder. I guess because it comes quicker at you or something. Or you yeah. just can't. You're like more focused on the guy in front of you, so you can't really find your. Your groove sometimes for me, anyways. I don't ride very good following people. I've noticed that. Like I, 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 I. Yeah, it's like trying to hold someone else's tire. You, mm -hmm. you kind of you, you go into a different. The way, the, at least the way I look at things, and like the track, like you just start focusing on what the other person is doing more. Yeah. And right. I, I feel like the times where I've had the most trouble is like when I'm in that kind of situation, I don't mind. I think, I think I mind. I don't think it bothers me as much to try to go uh, balls out if I'm up front. Um, mm -hmm. But it is, it is, I do think it is harder uh, when I'm behind people. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Sometimes I can find the, the rhythm and sometimes it just throws me off. I think I do think that and it it also depends on like the person the people you're riding with. I feel like there's certain people that I can mm -hmm. ride with uh like that. Like uh I felt like it was interesting this weekend riding with Wal Walker. Um mm -hmm. I, I felt like he and I kind of we had a like a, a good kind of pace together. Um yeah. Anyway. Right. yeah. Are you rode with him at Rock Creek too, yeah? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, this weekend at Rock Rock Creek. So I have a if that's it for your race run, a, a final little subject here. I was just wanted to talk about Windrock itself, the bike shop, etc. Yeah, um, yeah, I really like um, you know, I really like the Gravity House um. I meant to actually, yeah. So, like, you know, Chuck and Jordan and yeah. Uh, yeah. Matthew, like all those guys. I mean, you come in there, their goal is to see how quickly they can get you back out on the track. I even like uh, Brandon, who want, got first, I think it's the 30 group, uh, 30, 39. He said, like, Aaron Gwen was in there, like, he busted up his wheel and he came in and like yeah. Aaron jumped in there and got his wheel squirted right. away and got him back out on the track. So yeah, I love what, love what those guys are doing. And the yeah. biggest thing that stands out to me is like, they, you know, they want it to be right. Like they don't just <laughs> like accept, you know, that, that it's okay. Yeah. We've kind of put some tape on it or fixed it. Like they, they you know, they, right. they couple of things that i've noticed like you know they, they take the time to make sure it's right yeah yeah i agree 100 percent. that's a, that's a good point that's how i felt too like you, like the bike shop like a1 bike shop they do suspension it seems like there. my friend got new forks there they they're and they're racers mm -hmm. so that whole scene is just such a race oriented scene in, in such a good way all this you know all anything you're going to buy there is like top of the line good stuff and um and then all the knowledge everyone has there it's like if you're the best of the best you're going to go to windrock whether it's your uh, suspension or a tire builder like everybody all the best of the best is there so yeah. sounds great and then my friend got some lessons from jordan two days of lesson with jordan said it was amazing yeah, it really dialed him in. So yeah, and then you got that too. You got uh, the lessons and the bike shop. The whole thing is just it's epic. That great place. It's, it's so cool. I mean, just the picnic tables under the porch, the pressure washers. Like, yeah. I mean, you really, you really. It's just like it's just such a a nice little home base to to operate out of. Um, yeah. The campgrounds are killer too. I like the campgrounds. 
Yeah. I meant to buy, I actually tried on some hundred percent elbow pads there today. Um, I just got to buy them. They, they, I really liked them and I ran, I ran out of time and I forgot to get them. Um, but, um, uh, yeah. All right. Killer Miller. Uh, that's all I got. Unless you got anything. No, man. I mean, I know, um, I'm a little bit, uh, kind of focused now on, on snowshoes. So, you know, mm -hmm. when, rock, like I said, I've been here for a while and uh, really enjoyed a lot of the progression. It was great riding with you, you know, just hitting those jumps over and over. Just, I think, yeah. um, I think it's, you know, I think I've gotten all the trails now. Um, yeah. It's just, it was a, it was, it was a, uh, it wasn't just a race. It was kind of like a little season of just, yeah focus on wind rock and the and the race was kind of like the the crescendo but now it's time to go focus on uh snowshoe so yeah yeah i'm looking forward to that and if you come to snowshoe i might make you a sandwich man nice nice <laughs> oh that'll de that'll <laughs> definitely uh that might get me there uh, and i did get a kick out of uh jerry like he said you know because i was asking him like hey you know we want to get you on the podcast he's like yeah and it turns out he had been listening to the podcast and uh he's like he told me he's like i got such a kick out of you saying that you keep all your used uh brake pads and i was like well i keep those for steve you know <laughs> <laughs> like, i took i took some off today um and i was like i'll say these okay. Steve. <laughs> yeah because i went through your old ones already <laughs> i got i got a fresh uh i got a fresh uh set of pads for so, you get perfect yeah don't throw those away <laughs> they don't last very long yeah no you well know, i i got a uh a new tire for windrock and for the race day so i wrote it race day practice in the race and then I wrote it at Rock Creek, and everything was like done. <laughs> I know, man. I did the same thing. I put a I put a new tire on uh, for my race run, and yeah. uh, I looked at it today, and I was like, I'm gonna have to buy a new new tire for for right. So, yeah, yeah, and nothing better than new tires. Yep. Yep. All right. We'll on to the next one. Yeah. See you, buddy. Sweet. Late. Bye.